forgot to press record. <laughs> okay, are you ready? <clears throat> <clears throat> Me too. Do you like my shirt? Where's your shirt? Like this. We could have been twins. And yet here we are, not being twins. This sweater has a spot on it too. Yeah, it's paint. It's paint. Looks like poo, but it's not. I've, I've noticed I've worn the sweater in the past and there's always a dot there and I've always wondered why no one's ever asked about it. It's paint. This sweater's like a towel. I love this sweater. Where'd you get so it? so comfortable. Winners? I've just been waiting for the sweater to one day be mine. But he hasn't shrunk it yet. So comfy. I don't think he'll ever shrink it. It's like wearing a blanket. Or a towel. Hello everyone and welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about... More games. And... Yawns. Yawns. Yeah, you yawn a lot. Aww. We are here today to do our monthly wrap up. And this wrap up is for the month of August. And what a month it was. Literally, it both flew by and went very slow all at the same time. How does that work? How could it fly by but also went slow? It just slow? feels like it went by, some parts went fast and other parts went slow. I bet it's because the first part went by really fast. Because we were away, we were traveling, and now this second house has been really slow because you're anticipating moving into the house. Yes. We played a total of 49 games in the month of August. 49 different games. 73 plays. That's a lot. Couldn't get to 50, apparently. We no. were one game away. Jeez Louise. Just like usual, we're going to fly through some of these games because we've already talked about them numerous times. We actually did an entire wrap up of our trip to Edmonton. We didn't really dive into a lot of these games though. So maybe we're just going to pick a few that we're going to talk about today. And you'll probably see some others pop up in a future board game snapshots. And plus other videos probably. 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 Now, I apologize in advance if we suddenly become quite bright like this. We are sitting in front of a large window that doesn't know when to quit. Very bright. The sun is, I even put the curtains up and the sun is just like, let me in. I don't know what the solution is, peace, because we're sitting in front of a window and it just is what it is. So the light's going to fluctuate. Once again, we are not professionals. If you are here because- For professional quality. You like professional quality videos, you're in the wrong spot. You're in the wrong spot. Let's get into the games we played. We have been daddling. We have been a-doing too much. Without further ado, let's jump into it. The games we played in August, we played Parade, amazing. Yeah, we didn't mention that in our the video where we talked about all our Alice in Wonderland games. Yeah, that was our bad. We played Scout, a classic, so a good. favorite in this house. We played Ahoy, which we would talk about, but... We'll have stuff well, in, wait, in the future. We should have stuff in the future. Yeah. That's in the future. We'll have coverage on that in the future. We played Ripple Rush five times. I don't know how that has such a low rating on BGG, people. That's a fun little game, let me tell you. We played Wild Style, which is a new game coming from Pandasaurus, which we did cover in a board game snapshots. So you can go check that out. I played Inhumane Conditions with Ilya, and that was a bunch of fun. We played Herbaceous. And then we played Hadrian's Wall, mm -hmm. which is a game that we were maybe hesitant to try for I a think while. Me more so than more you. so Jeff than me, because it is a heavy flip and write. I have a tendency to not overly enjoy super heavy roll and writes, and flip and writes, the and end writes. writes. So I was hesitant to try Hadrian's Wall, but then we played it and I was like, no, this one makes sense. For some reason, I didn't find I got lost in the combos. Right. Because Three Sisters, I'm not directly comparing these, but just give you an example of why I tend to not like them so much. Is in Three Sisters, you can have like bonuses that you can take at any point. Right. And I always right. forget about them. But in Hadrian's Wall, everything's connected. So you do everything in one one flow it's not like oh well i have this thing that i can do at some point but i'm not going to do it right now i really like that so hadrian's wall is basically like this massive roll and write yeah with meeples that you take and it allows you to do certain actions and fill out certain things and you're basically just protecting a kin kingdom you're protecting a wall and you're kind of doing that on your own yeah it's a very kind very of very independent solo-esque experience even if you're playing with other people you're doing your own thing i also really enjoyed hadrian's wall i felt really overwhelmed when we first sat down to learn it there's a lot going on in this game and like three sisters fleet the dice game like that's my speed of roll and write this is definitely like a pretty big <sighs> I think it is in terms of complexity. Three Sisters, to me, is straightforward. There's just a lot to track in terms of the yeah, combos and fair. the bonuses. This, there's like so many friggin spots. 50 different sections yeah. that you have to fill out. So it's a lot. I think yeah. this is one we might add to our collection. Yeah, I think so too. I do think it's good to have. And that's Hadrian's Wall. Then we played Calico, which we love. Botnik, just one. It's just a classic. Then we played... 
Athenium. Athenium, Mystic Library. And I will just touch on this briefly sure. um, because it is a game that I was excited to play. I think for me, it's, so, it's such a beautiful game. Essentially in this game, like it you is. are stacking books on a library shelf and it's all the books are like, have really funny titles. Mm -hmm. It's like mystic. So it's like a fantasy type of world. Yeah, I didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted it to. It was fine. It was fine, I think. I feel like it should have been way better than it was. I might have been cranky. Yeah, I might have been in a cranky mood or something because like thinking about the mechanics of the game, like it's very puzzly and you're trying to place like certain book types in yeah. certain kind of especially for you like that is I know that is my that's kind your of bread game. and butter I know I don't know something didn't deliver on yeah it there was for just me. something there's something something missing yeah. on it I don't know then we played Star Wars Villainous which we covered in our most recent board game snapshot so if you want to hear more about that mm -hmm. you can definitely go check that out then I played prehistories with Tyler and Ilya and I still need to show that to you mm -hmm. which I actually liked so much more than I thought I would. And this is a game from 25th century. There is a new expansion or new version coming out to Kickstarter soon. But anyways, maybe more on that later because 25th centuries did send us that game for a review. So then I played Happy City, which I loved. It's freaking adorable and it's on BGA. So I'm playing it on BGA right now mm -hmm. as well. We played Ohanami. Cute is it Ohanami? Game. Ohanami. I don't know why I can't say it. Me neither. Then we played the Uve Trio. We're only going to talk about one of them because they play all very similar. We yeah. played Nova Luna, yep. which is the OG. Then we played Sagani, which is the second. And then we played Framework, which is the newest version of this type of game from Uve Rosenberg. So Framework is a very puzzly framework building game where you are trying to match up different frame types based on what the tiles are telling you to do. So it's like this tile wants to have three brick frames. Adjacent to it. Adjacent to it in a line. So you're building, literally building out the framework based on the tiles you're putting. But the interesting thing is you put that tile out that's asking you to do three bricks. The next tile that you're placing that has a brick frame also has a goal. Yep. So you're really just kind of building out this framework of more and more goals, trying to achieve as many as you possibly mm -hmm. can. Yeah, you might want three bricks in a row, but then you play two that need gold or steel mm -hmm. frames and then those kind of get clustered and then you can't actually branch out. I really liked all of them. They're very good puzzly games. There's also a drafting element to these yep. games as well. So you're drafting the tiles that you pull out and in Nova Luna, the difference was it's like the patchwork system, Yeah. which I love. I love patchwork. Like the, so I liked the, the like you can only pick so many in front of three. the little yep. marker. I think they're different enough to have all three. But that's coming from us. Of course, we, we just got to catch them all. So the biggest thing is if you're wondering, oh, which of these three games to get? Just get whichever theme you think is the coolest. Yeah. I played The Road to Canterbury, which Jeff hasn't played yet. So maybe we'll talk about that more once we've both played it. Then we played Next Station London, which is a really interesting flip and write game where you're building out like... Subway? To, uh, like transit lines yeah, transit in different lines, colors. It, yeah. It's also on BGA. So if you want to try it out, definitely go check it out there. I'm in a game of it right now. I, I mean, liked yeah. it. I I'm thought it was really fun. We played Quinto, which is very similar to Ripple Rush, but not quite as good. That's my opinion. <laughs> There, I said it. I played Deep Sea Adventures with Ilya, which is an oink game, which I thought was really fun. And then we played Come Together, which is a new game coming out from Chili Fox Games, which is a worker placement game set at a music festival. Mm -hmm. This game has a lot going on. It's a lot heavier than I anticipated it yeah. to be. And if you want to learn more about it, Tyler and Ilya did an entire video on it. Go and check it out if it sounds like something you might be interested in. I think for us, we would need to play it more. I think I liked it more than you did. Yeah, it was fine. More complicated than you felt it needed to be. Yep, definitely. There was a bit of nuance in the game. I was like, why did you have to make it this way? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, the um, theme is really cool, though. Yeah, the theme didn't resonate super yeah. high with me. I mean, it's... It's like, uh, I think it's supposed to represent like Woodstock. It was fine. And I could see a lot of people loving this game. I'm not trying to put a damper on it by any means. It just was not for me. I really liked it. Then we played Delicious, which is a new game from Pencil First Games. Another flip and write game. I think we were lukewarm on it. But yeah, see, if you don't remember, it means you're lukewarm. The garden, then you had to draw the lettuce. And draw the carrots in the wheelbarrow. Yeah, it was, it was, it was all right. It was fine. Then we played Alice is Missing. It's a one-shot RPG that plays in 90 minutes all through text. It is about a 16-year-old girl named Alice who goes missing. Bet you couldn't guess that. 
from the title. And everybody that's playing plays a different person in Alice's life. I think you either just like randomly select them or you pick which one you yeah, want, I'm sure depending you on the group. You, yeah. So I played Alice's secret girlfriend, Jeff played her brother, Tyler played her best friend, and Ilya played a friend that had moved away. The entire game is played silently through text messages where you're all like talking to each other about Alice is missing and then you're getting- Trying this, to figure out what's going on. Trying and... to figure out what's going on and everybody starts off with a motive and a secret. You have to tell a story about yourself, which <clears throat> obviously you make up because it's a role playing game. And then you have prompts that show up throughout the game. So like at 80 minutes, there's a, a clock that kind of ticks down at 80 minutes. One person has a card that says 80, let's just say, and they flip it up and it'll tell them a question or tell them something that they have to do. Yep. And then they introduce that scenario into the story. We don't have a ton of experience with RPG games besides D&D. &D, and I think this has mm -hmm. been my favorite RPG. I really game. liked that it has a timer. So you're literally only committing to 90 minutes. Yes. You know that after 90 minutes, this game is going to end. If anyone plays D&D &D out there, you know that sessions can run for Forever. hours and hours <laughs> and hours. And it's really cool because you get to just text and like you can yeah. just kind of like lounge around and be some somebody different be someone for different while. for for 90 minutes and yeah. really get into character and there be some funny moments where in the group chat someone would say something funny or like and it's not like it, supposed to be and funny. it's not supposed to be funny and everyone in the in the rooms laugh like kind of like <laughs> Yeah, because you're supposed to be silent. And so what was really funny that happened in our scenario is like Tyler started talking about these rocks that he keeps a bucket of rocks at his door to throw at people. And then like we kind of got into it and someone's like, oh my God, he's here, he's here. And, and someone was just like, throw, throw rocks at him. Where's your rock. bucket of rocks? Where's and we were just dying. And it was also really funny because like I said, everybody gets a motive and a secret and kind of a little bit about themselves. And Jeff was supposed to be like this. <laughs> Jeff was supposed to be this really supportive. And I was like, supposed to keep the group together. Keep the group together. And all he did the whole time was like, I don't trust you. You're the one. <laughs> I completely forgot my like prompt kind of thing. <laughs> it was really funny. I really enjoyed it. It I was very, it. very good. And one thing that I also really liked about this is probably one of my favorite parts of the game is at the very beginning, every person goes into another room and they record a voicemail message for Alice. And then at the end of the game to close it out, everyone's voicemail message plays with this background music and it's just so thematic. I don't know. I was a little bit moved by it at the end. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful kind of story and it gets crafted incredibly well yeah. and I think if you have the right group that can really immerse themselves into this it will be one of the best experiences you'll have. I agree. I highly recommend it. I'm definitely looking for a copy of this. Then we played Almost Innocent which we have a full Kickstarter preview on if you would like to go check that out. We played it four times. We loved it. Spoiler alert. Then Kanban EV which we have already talked about in our last board game snapshots. Played it twice loved it. Kinfire Chronicles we talked about a little bit in a video with Tyler and Ilya. Mm -hmm. You should go check that out. That is coming to Kickstarter August 30th. Whenever this video okay. is out, yep. I, I don't know. It's August 30th. We played Circadian's Chaos Order in asymmetrical alien-ish game. Yeah, a bit area game. control. Bit. I kind of put it in between root and scythe, mm -hmm. like somewhere in that kind of realm. It was very good. Needs more than one play for me. My faction was kind of cool, but also I, I didn't wanted, get to attack I, people enough. I thought your faction was really neat. I wanted if to I be Tyler's again. faction because all he did was attack If people. I play again, I'd like to be them. We played Wonderland's War a few times, which we also covered in our last board game snapshot. I played Ven with Ilya. I also played Kotal with Ilya, which was fun. Jeff and Tyler played Twilight Struggle a little bit so that uh, he could learn so that he could teach me. I played about half a game of Twilight Struggle, so Tyler taught it to me. Oh my god, it's so good. I understand why this game was number one on the BGG for so long. I'm, I'm really to excited to play it with Jamie. Yeah, so, so, so. So, so. So, 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 so. so. so good. So good. We played Dead Reckoning, of course, a new John D. Clare game, which we did talk about a little bit in our wrap up from when we visited Tyler and Ilya. Mm -hmm. I want to play the game more before we do. I think maybe we can add this into a board game snapshot later. Sure. Yeah. This It's just such a big game. There's a new Kickstarter stuff that's out now. Yeah. But it's very good. Then we played Wizards of the Grimoire, which we have in our last board game snapshot. So go check that out. We played Cribbage. Oh, I want to show this. Yeah, so for Jeff's birthday... Jamie got me a custom board. A custom crib board. It's beautiful. Made of wood and resin, and it has metal pegs. Jeff 
loves crib. We call him Crib Jeff. You guys know that. We've played crib now three times. I've only yeah. ever played once before in my life. And as you all know, I'm not great at math. You're getting to know though. Um, oh, we played last night. It was a close uh, game. I won by three. I'm actually impressed that I've been able to keep up as much as I have. Yeah. Then we played a game called Fine Sand. Fine Sand is a Friedman Freeze mm -hmm. game that Jeff found on a discount shelf at Mission Fun and Games. Mm -hmm. Tell the people about Fine Sand, Jeffrey. Sure. Yeah, I don't know when it came out. Probably a long time ago. I think ago. it's an older game which I always think is somewhat interesting to talk about. Fine Sand is actually a deck deconstruction game. So you're going to start with a set a set of cards, essentially. The game we played, we had the exact same hands. And ultimately, the end goal is to get rid of as many cards as you can. And you do that by playing them in front of yourself. So you have a bit of a tableau. Mm -hmm. And each card has a different color that allows you to do a different action. It might be draw cards, it might be play a card, it might be build a sandcastle or whatever, because ultimately you're trying to build sandcastles in How this game. How fun is that? Playing those cards into your tableau in order to to get rid of them all. So they all have numbers and values and those numbers, the higher the value of the card, the harder it is to play it in front of you because you have to pay the cost associated with it. So if it's an eight card, you have to pay eight in order to play it in front of you. And to do that, you have to build out your hand so that you have more ability to pay for cards to play in front of you. Yep. And the other thing that you can do is actually pass cards around to other players. I would say this game would play best at like three to four. Yeah. It was fine at two player, but there's a mechanic in it where Basically, Jamie and I just kept trading cards back and forth, so it kind of eliminated that as being like a variable in the game. But I really enjoyed it. I really loved the cute little like cutesy artwork. Cute. The sand castles were super cute. Mm -hmm. The little like workers and trucks were very cute. I've not played anything like it. Yeah, it's different. It was His very, games are always different. Yeah, it was very different. I recommend checking it out if you are at a boardroom game cafe and they have a copy or whatever. I, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I bought it on a whim. I was like, oh, Freedom Free is $10, $15 game. I just think that like there's something a little bit special about his games. I don't know what it is. I, I get that feeling too. Like yeah. whenever we played Fuji Flush, I always have a really good time oh playing God. Fuji Flush. Fool was when we great. played Fool, they always feel like comfort food. Yeah. Like comfort food games yeah. for some reason. I would agree with that. Yeah. We also played the Whatnot Cabinet with Ilya. It was the last game before we left that we played, before we left Edmonton. You don't remember it again? Mm -hmm. There's a turtle in my cabinet. Yeah. Then we played Bunny Kingdom, which has been sitting on our shelf of shame for, for like no reason. a year. It was so easy to learn. Oh my god. So it's a Richard Garfield game and <coughs> another area control game. Yep. And We've you, been playing a lot of area control games. Yeah, we have. You're controlling areas with your little bunnies and you're building up kingdoms, yep. basically. And it's on like this grid. So you're playing different cards that are giving you like a specific location where you put out your little bunnies or allowing you to build your castles or, or collect resources. Yep. It's a card drafting game. Like you are literally yep. taking a card, passing it, taking your card, it's card drafting area like, control. I really liked it. Like it's it was adorable. Is it area control though? I think because you can't take over the areas. Do you area know I mean? majority. Area majority makes more sense. I yeah. Think. You score your biggest areas by your castles, which are your defense, basically by how many resources you produce. It's just a big point scorer. Yeah. Massive point scorer. And it's very cute. We played it too. I would not recommend playing this at we two. We kept to our own sides. Yeah. Less interaction. Yeah. If anyone's played area majority or area control games, you know probably that they don't play super well at two. I would like to play this with Jason and Acacia. I think Acacia yeah. would like this game. It's a very, very, very good game. Then we played Harrow County or Harrow County four times. Not going to say anything about it. Coverage yeah. coming. You'll see Coverage coming. coming. We played Claim twice, which is a fun little creepy trick taking game that we now love. We got to play Merchant's Cove again, which mm -hmm. I freaking love that game. It's very good. You haven't changed factions. I've only ever played the blacksmith. I got to play the Oracle and I really liked her. I, I, I don't know. Her. I have a hard time because I really love the blacksmith. Yeah. I played uh, three games of Ugly, at least three. It may have been more that I didn't record, but Ugly Griffin in, which is a solo button shy game. I think we will be making a solo game video soon. So yep. I'll talk about it more then. Then we played Flick of Faith which was sent to us from Awaken Realms Light. Yes. A dexterity game. An area control dexterity game. It is so much fun. It is so silly. It is one Loved of those, it. It, it gave me similar vibes to Camel Up. Oh yeah. If you have four people and you want to just have nonsensical laughter 
that's a game to play. Oh my God. There, yes. There's these cards that come out that change the dynamic of things. So basically in Flick of Faith, you have this big, neoprene beautiful mat. neoprene mat <clears throat> with all of these different areas on it that you're trying to flick your discs into in order to have represent majority in order to score yes. points. But with there's asymmetric these, characters. Yeah, with asymmetric characters. Though, then there's these cards come out called Laws. And these laws break the game. Yeah. So normally you'd flick one disc at a time. But a law might come out and be like, now you have to flick three disc stacks onto the neoprene mat. And it just becomes nonsense. It's like, hilarious. The cards are incredible. And you vote on those laws and yeah, too so by you doing vote. like... Yeah, the group would vote. <laughs> so you pull two laws, you read them, and then the top law, the bottom law gets voted just like Caesar used to do. Yeah. But then there's also an expansion that they also sent to us yeah. called Apocalypse. And the cards and the laws in that game are just nonsense. And it comes with a ramp. It, yeah, <laughs> it's just pure chaos. Oh like, my God. we had so much fun. I'm so, so happy that we got to experience it. Yeah. I don't hear anyone ever, ever. talking no. about this. I threw it up into our Discord, and then there was like a handful of people that reflected everything I stated. Yeah. They were like, oh my God, we had so, we have so much fun playing this. Yeah. It's like just a fun like silly version of crokinole with and i just love it because yeah. it's, it's all like different types of gods so like there's zeus or there's egyptian gods or there's, there's a mayan of, gods yeah. it's so much fun i had a literal like how much fun was i having yeah i was having was, literally the best time. it was awesome this is an easy one to just flick some discs around while you have a drink and yep. and chat and, and have great. a couple laughs i loved it yeah i really loved it. it it blew me away i did not expect that then we played over boss because sometimes you just got to go back to your old favorites and i lost and i hated it i played on a rim three times which is a solo game once again we'll talk about that more when we go into those solo games mm -hmm. but i really liked it we played mushroom sorcerer which will have a full review coming soon. And then last but not least, we played Dominant Species from GMT. And let me tell you something. I thought this game was about dinosaurs <laughs> and it is not about dinosaurs. There's no dinosaurs in the game. Just as an FYI, we'll both have lots to say about this, I'm sure. But all I no. wanted to say about it to start is that I was very intimidated to learn this game because it's a GMT game. If you are afraid to try this game, do not be. The rules are simple. The mm -hmm. rules are very straightforward. This is a game of action selection and execution and where the difficulty of this game comes in because it's rated like a four plus on BGG. 4.04. .04. Is within the strategy of the game. But if you are intimidated to pick up dominant species to learn it, do not be afraid. I would compare it quite equally to a game like Feast for Odin where I think a lot of people see Feast for Odin and see how big it is and how many action selections there are and be like, oh, that game's so heavy. At the base level of it, of the mechanics of it, Peace for Odin is very simple. Mm -hmm. You're literally just picking actions and doing a thing. Where it becomes difficult is in order to score effectively and be strategic and understand what all the little nuances are in the game. That's where the difficulty comes in. But Jamie taught me dominant species in 10 minutes. How long did it take you to learn it? Half an hour? Maybe. Not even? As long as it took um, me to read the book. Dominant species is absolutely incredible. So where J Jamie said like there's no dinosaurs, it's more so like it's, the worst it's like reptiles, amphibians, arachnids. Think it's, of the food chain. Yeah, there's no specific six, mammals. Six species. There's, yeah, there's no specific animals, all species. And you're just trying to spread your species around this board. Certain geography types because the map is earth habitat are more valuable than others like the sea is super valuable so if you can control the sea and dominate the sea you'll score a bunch of victory points at the end of the round. another area control game. um we played it too i'm glad we played it i wouldn't recommend it at two i can't wait to play this it would be more. incredible at four I think I would love to play it at six to have to see how all of the it different animals nuts. interact with each yeah. other. But I think four is probably your sweet spot. Again, GMT is one of these publishers that continues to knock it out of the park for mm -hmm. me. And Dominant Species was another one that just, I, I'm enamored with it. I'm really excited to play Marine. I can't say enough good things about yeah. this. And that's us playing it at two players, which is not the ideal player count. Jeff absolutely crushed me because I didn't focus on the right things. However, mm -hmm. there's so much to explore within this game strategy-wise, and that would change for every animal that you use. So I played mammals, Jeff played as the reptiles. I think the mammal faction or whatever would probably play better in a higher player game. Same as the birds. Same as the birds. The, the arachnids. The arachnids seem a little bit overpowered. Yeah, the arachnids have a free... Like kill action, uh, basically. A free action that's super... Yeah. I've heard, I've read 
that the Arachnids are a bit uh, OP. I don't know if anyone's ever said OP. I'm sure they are OP, but a bit different, difficult mm-hmm. to defeat. I wasn't expecting to love it, so I just I, think it I goes to show what you can do with like really good mechanics. Yeah, I oh, would. I would. Last yes. thing I want to say quickly, I would recommend trying to learn this with other people that don't also know the game. I could see. A new person playing this game with someone who knows it really well and getting absolutely demolished. demolished. It's amazing. The only thing I wish is that it was cute. I'm gushing over it. But it's, it's not yeah. cute. So those are all of the games that we played in the month of August. We are hoping that September will also be flush with games. I want to um, play a bunch today. Me too. We're going to stop filming and we're going to start playing is what we're going to do. do We're going to do another video and then we're going to start playing. Those are all the games. Let us know down below what you think about the ones that we played. If you've played them, we'd love to know all that good stuff. If you're interested in buying board games like any of the 49 that we talked about today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... Boardroom Game Cafe. Yes, it is. That is all we have. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later is. I feel like this is really high up, isn't it? Whatever. I wonder and it if just, it's worse because of the curtain. Do you think? Maybe. Because the curtains are very, like, white. But the sun is also very bright. I really I don't know. I said white, but you do. You. The Hop along, bunny money. Hop along, bunny money. All right. I do. You do? I do. I do. You do? <laughs> I do. No, I do. Do you know what that's from? Yes. What are you quoting? Uh, you don't remember. But I know it. Yeah, you do. It's not The Office. It is. It's Michael and Holly. Oh. You do? Do you? <laughs> Oh, I caught that fly.